You know what game this is! Uh, this is one of my old favorites that I used to play on my Atari back when I was a little, little kid. Uh, I've only messed around with it a little bit on the iPad, but it was a really fun little blast from the past. So I'm going to share it with you. All right, so the basic idea is you're trying to defend this city from these missiles that are falling from the sky. The problem is all of your projectiles take time to hit their targets. They have these nice kind of like uh, anti-aircraft. They have these really nice wide blast radii, but the big problem is you have to sort of guess the timing. Uh, you can't control which gun your uh, missiles will emerge from. There's, you notice there's one on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. And so you'd never quite know what the distance is that they're going to be traveling. So you do your best guess about how, you know, about basically where you need to set the target point so that they can... Oh no. So you can catch these uh, enemy missiles in the blast radii. But yeah, you're... Um... Oh no. <laughs> but yeah, so you have to like lead all of your targets. Uh oh, did something hit? Oh no! There you go. Ah, ah! Nope. Get that one. Oh no, I missed one! Ah, I hit a city! Dang it! I'm pretty sure... Didn't John Connor play this in, like, Terminator 2 or something? Pretty sure. It was funny, see, because he was trying to stop a nuclear war. Ah! Oh my gosh! Yeah, so this was the kind of game that was designed to uh, get quarters out of you uh, back in the day. Oh no! Oh, so look, look at that. Do you see that one that... that missile that just crossed the entire uh, screen in order to hit one. That was, uh... Yeah, so that that's what, what, what can happen if you, uh... If you don't plan well enough. Like, you had... <laughs> if I'd timed it right, then that uh, particular missile could have been fired by the nearby spot. Instead, it went all the way across, and there you go, I'm dead. <laughs> upgrades. Wait, what? What upgrades? Okay, I've got a bunch of points I can spend to increase my my power, my reload, my sp ooh the speed of my projectiles. Let's go with the speed of my projectiles, and then how the reload I assume is how frequently I can fire. See, really would have helped me. Like that one spot where, like down in the bottom left corner, I had uh, a, a launcher that I was trying to protect, but it had already fired its missile, was still reloading. So when I tried to fire at the bomb that was landing on it, the other, you know, the the other uh, uh, launcher from all the way across the map tried to fire because the one that was close was already reloading. So maybe it wouldn't happen if I had upgraded my reload. Now this part of the game, it was not part of the original uh, the original um, Atari game. Basically, every time you restarted the Atari game, it was the exact same uh, scenario. I wonder if they had to amp up the difficulty of the game, because on the Atari, I remember I was controlling my crosshair with a joystick, a big, massive joystick, and hitting a single button with my thumb to try to place my, uh, my crosshairs. This time, I can just move my finger around and just tap the screen whenever I want to. So, uh, yeah. Huh. So yeah, so we've got another uh, couple folks joining me in the chat here. We got, we still got Daniel Pearlfoy, we got Dunedain, Ranathcord, and, uh, huh. Interesting, Ranathcord says, according to a show, uh, I think, uh, according to, to Chuck, uh, the, the gameplay of Missile Command is in time to Tom Sawyer by Rush. So if you listen to it, you can do better. <laughs> okay, that is fascinating. Uh, I have been noticing that there are some games where if I sort of get into a rhythm, if I start actually even like kind of dancing along with a rhythm, I can do better at the game. Now, it helps if it's a rhythm game. I think it was uh, Dance of Fire and Ice where I actually was dancing along with the music in order to stay in the rhythm of the game. And that really helped a lot. I could totally imagine that working with, uh, with a game like Missile Command, particularly because you have to, you know really worry about your reload speed. So let's let, let's try this again, this time with the upgrades. All right, see if I can do any better. Okay, I thought I was going to catch both of those in the blast radius, but I didn't. Oop. I'm not sure what that power-up does exactly. 
Oh, it looks like my blast radii just got much bigger. Well, that's nice. And now it has stopped. I do like this music. I don't know if you can hear it well enough. How is how is the game audio for you folks? See, now what I need is an iPad version of Joust. Because that, like, I loved Missile Command as a kid, but Joust was my game. I'm not sure what that R does. Is that reload speed or something? Ah, yikes. Okay, so one of my launchers just got hit. Oh, and I missed. Of course... I could have ignored that missile because it wasn't actually aiming towards any of, of my targets. Did my own blast radius just hit one of my own cities? I, I think I just got one of my um, missile launchers back and then immediately lost it again because I wasn't defending that spot. Oh no. There you go. Finding spots where these missiles are converging and you can actually take out two with the same blast is uh, really important to your success. Okay, so it looks like one of my missile launch pads is coming back. I'm not sure how... Oh! Ah, dang it! I'm not sure how quickly that actually happens. Now, this is going very badly for me. Oh my gosh, am I doing worse than last time? I might actually be doing worse than last time. <laughs> you really have to okay so i just get to sit here and hope i recharge fast enough oh uh, no okay so it looks like that battery represents my lives is that what this is can i afford any new upgrades power i guess oh power is the size of my blast radii well that makes sense Okay, cool. So everyone's telling me the audio is fine. Good, then I won't worry about it. Um, so I'm not sure what happens when I run out of these batteries. I feel like I should restart and find out. One thing you have to really appreciate about older games is their elegance. Because, you know, you know there's a lot you can do in a modern game that, uh, you know, to, to, to just add complexity endlessly and just sort of... Um, overwhelm people and bewilder them with the sheer amount of things that are going on in your game um and you know and that can actually be effective sometimes you know that's actually that can be a really good experience but you know in old these older games where you know you didn't have a 16 button controller you had a joystick with a single button and you didn't uh you know there were really hard limits on what you could actually like actually accomplish you know um Like things that would be just incredibly easy today, you know, putting a certain like putting this number of missiles on the screen, for instance, would have been actually you know part of a huge part of the technical challenge of making this game work originally. So, you, you the amount of complexity you could put in a game like this was naturally limited. So people had to make their designs elegant. These days, people will go, you know, you kind of admired a, a, a designer who chooses uh, to come up with an elegant design. But back then, it was a necessity. You couldn't succeed unless your design was elegant. And by elegant, I mean just like, you know, doing a lot with a small number of parts. You know, not sort of relying on complexity, but instead having, you know, some really, like, efficient use of, of, of game elements. So that, you know, each element of the game does multiple things. Or can be, you know, or doesn't even need to do multiple things because... Each thing you're doing is so powerful. Just, like, this game, you know, it's got very few discrete mechanics. It's just, you know, these, these enemy missiles are coming in, your missiles take time to hit them, and your missiles have a certain size blast radius. And so you have to, like, estimate this kind of complex math problem in your head uh, to figure out... Whoa. You know, basically, you know, there's, there's a part of your brain that kind of does geometry really fast. 
uh, you know, like, doing math, doing, like, actual, like, arithmetic takes a lot of, you know, mental resources and a lot of concentration. What, was that, like, a smart bomb or something? Um, but your brain naturally does geometry very quickly. You know, the part of your brain that was designed to, like, uh, figure out, oh, no! how to catch the next branch when you're swinging from tree to tree, you know, that sort of can estimate distances and timing and, and size and shape uh, really quickly. I mean, it's actually, you know, that's complicated math, even for a computer to do, but your brain does it naturally very quickly. And so this game sort of relies on you making those very fast calculations about, okay, if my bullets take about this amount of time to reach about this distance and my blast radius is about this size, then I'll catch maybe these projectiles in the in the radius but i can't think about it too long because i have to make a decision and move on because there's so many things happening at once and so with a very simple set of mechanics they're actually engaging a very complex part of your brain which makes it just a, an extremely satisfying experience to get into Daniel Profile points out, my favorite game was Snake. So yeah, so I was a Joust guy. Missile Command was also one of my favorites. So it was, you know, second or third on the list. Uh, Snake was was a pretty good one too. I didn't play that much Snake until um, I got older and I got my first cell phone and Snake was the only game on my cell phone. Uh, so Wolfo78 says, is this like tower defense that automatically fires or are you manually firing? I just realized that not everyone is as old as me and played the original Missile Command and knows how it works. And because I'm playing this on a touch screen, it might actually be kind of hard to tell what's going on. So let's quickly, uh, let's restart again. So yeah, each time you see an X appear on the screen, that is a place where I am tapping. So originally, you'd actually be using a joystick and moving a crosshair around the screen and hitting, uh, hitting the button whenever you wanted to, uh, to place one of these Xs. And so whenever you place an X, that's when uh, you know, a missile gets launched at that spot. And it, the missile takes whatever time it takes uh, to get there. And you can't control which gun the missile is fired from. So I think usually it'll, it'll go for the one that's, that's closest if that one is available. But if that one has just fired and it's still reloading, you can see the lines uh, sort of recharging um, each of the missile launchers. Now below each time I fire a missile from one of the missiles, missile launchers it will um oh no <laughs> it'll start reloading so if it's still if the closest one is still reloading when i fire then it'll get the next the second closest one and then the third oh no and then the third closest one ah my own missile <laughs> just took out one of those uh one of those cities um gotta be really careful with those <laughs> near air bursts you know danger close and all that uh but yeah so because I, I only I can't really control which missile is gonna fire. Um, oh no! I just lost another city. Oh gosh, this is not going well. <laughs> you can see that, like, yeah, that I wanted to have enough control over which missile was firing. Oh, that, oh, that was just a disaster. But you see, that was a cascade of bad situations where I was, um, where I would fire, uh, say, the left-hand uh, missile launcher. And while it was still reloading, I would realize, oh no, there's a missile heading right for that missile launcher. I'll fire again. But, but it's because uh, it was still reloading, I would fire, and then the most distant missile launcher would try to, to get a projectile over there. It would take five times as long as I expected and completely miss, and then my missile launcher is screwed. Um, and so it's very easy to get into those cascades. Uh, and so they get just very small number of elements, each of which behaves in a completely easily comprehensible way that you can just sort of grok just by attempting to play it a little bit just poking around with it you immediately understand what's going on but there's a degree there's enough complexity to you know to, to what's going on that you can never feel like you can perfectly master what you're doing so wolf will point out yeah so i can see that you're marking your targets like you would for artillery yeah that, that's pretty much the case okay so i wonder what this timer is here do I, is it 17 minutes until I get a new battery? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what this game is doing exactly with this battery uh, symbol. So it, it's interesting because, you know, all of the elements of the original game were very self-explanatory. It's like you didn't, you know, games didn't really come with instruction manuals that early. They came, there was a, there's sort of a middle ground where they came with instruction manuals in like, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. But earlier than that and later than that, they don't. Um... And so, so you, everything had to be self-explanatory, but that was fine, you know, because you actually could, you know, figure it out. I wonder, is it just like, is it just saying that, um, 
I can only play while I have battery life and the battery life recharges slowly. And, and so basically I have to, what, what happens if I run out? I don't know. Let's, let's see. Do I have enough points for upgrades? I think speed is one of the most valuable things I can get actually. So I'm going to go with that. And I guess I'll get some rebuild because it's cheap right now because it's at the bottom right. All right, cool. Let's play one more time just because I just really, I'm really curious what's going on with this battery life. And the thing I was pointing out was, you know, older games needed to be um, very self-explanatory. But you'll notice that some of the elements of this game that were added after the fact, that, were, that are, are not part of the original game, but are part of the modern remake... You'll note that uh, some of those are not nearly as self-explanatory, not, e not nearly as easy to understand. Um, and I've actually been, I've been trying out a few like little survival and, and collection game, uh, you know, games where it's like you're, you know, going and uh, collecting resources and crafting. I've just been doing research on a few of those, and there are a lot of those that are very difficult to understand your first time through. Um, and that, that is kind of, you know... It's it's a plague of modern games, and and I, I and I will e freely admit that you know the game that I work on, State of Decay, has that problem. There's a lot of parts of the game that are not very well explained, um, and look, I think that the ones that are not very well explained are also the ones that are the least important, uh, which is a saving grace of the game. But uh, still, I would much prefer to have made a game that was a little bit more elegant, a little bit more self-explanatory. But that that is sort of a problem that plagues a lot of survival games, in that you know. Part of what they're selling is complexity. Part of what they're saying is, you know, this game simulates real life. And they, they want it to feel as complex as real-world survival would be. Um, or at least, you know, not really as complex as real-world survival would be, but they want to sort of nod to that feeling that we have. Um, that, you know, there's a lot you'd have to worry about if you were trying to survive under some kind of difficult circumstance. Um, but because they're selling complexity... Um, Oh no! They're ah, that was not good. There we go. Um, they're sat. They're, they saddle themselves with this problem where they now you know they make a, a really complex game and now they have to explain it to people. And that was, that was a problem that we had on State of Decay uh, too. Is that we? Oh well, there go all of my missile launchers. <laughs> is that you know we we built a complex system, uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of complex interlocking systems um, first. And then we tackled the problem of how do we teach this to the player. And that was a bad move because, you know, it took a lot of effort. To, I mean, we, we basically remade our tutorial a couple of times. And it still doesn't really fully explain it as well as, uh, as I think it should. Um, and, you know, our, our ability to sort of uh, to, to go back and, and, and make a huge difference there is kind of limited. Just because we've built something so complex. I mean, the kind of tutorial that it would take to walk through it all would either be very... Um, you know, time consuming for the player or very complex for us to restructure the entire game to make it easier to understand. Um, and so I think one of the um, uh, one of the, the lessons that I've learned in the wake of State of Decay 2 is that when you're planning out a complex game like that, you have to complete you have to plan out how the player is going to learn that complexity while you work. Every step of the way you have to be thinking not you know think of the game as the entire game as a teaching tool uh, to, to teach the player, you know, like eventually you expect that they'll get into the end game and that they'll know everything and they'll be able to, you know, get into really super high level skilled play. But what the game is up until that point, uh, after, you know, 20 hours, 40 hours in when they really know what they're doing, the entire game's job is to teach them how to play. And so you have to play, you know, plan the progression of your game around that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, and, and so any any feature that has, you know, that, that, that doesn't teach itself automatically, you have to carefully think about how it's going to be introduced. Can you, you know, can you release it, you know, uh, like reveal it to the player one step at a time, make it really clear, uh, you know, how it works. And then later on, once a player does understand it all, can you make sure that the next time they play through, they don't actually have to go through all of that process again? Uh, that's also helpful. But anyway, so I feel like I've learned a lot from, uh, from watching games attempt to teach very complex uh, mechanics. Okay, let's see if I can get rid of that last chunk of battery and then find out what happens when the battery is empty. So Joshua Schluter is saying, uh, I'm trying to remember if I've ever played a Missile Command game. I'm very familiar with it, but I can't remember if I played the game or a clone of it. 
Yeah, so I don't, honestly, I don't really know, uh, because, you know, my dad actually worked at a computer magazine, uh, which, you know, back in the 80s, computer magazines were often for hobbyists who did a lot of programming themselves, and there was this sort of this expectation that, yeah, sure, you could buy a game, or you could just make your own clone of the game because everything was so simple. Uh, and so we actually had a lot of, like, weird little game clones and things like that that I would play on my Atari. Uh, we had an Atari with a disk drive uh, where we could get a lot of sort of amateur stuff. And so we had so much of that stuff, I, I'm not super clear in my memory which games I played, like, like you know, were the real games, you know, that were created by the original developers, and which ones were clones or, you know, something like you'd see from the modding community or, or, or on, you know, Itch.io or, you know, any of those other uh, sites. Roblox games. It was basically what I was playing as a kid. Um, yeah, so I can't promise that I actually... I, th I think it was a cartridge. I, th I think that my Missile Command was a cartridge, which definitely meant that it would have been a professionally manufactured game. Um, but I can't promise you that because it was so long ago. Well, it's nice when the, when the missiles just sort of line up like that, or the bombs. I guess these are bombs, right? These aren't missiles. Like, what I'm firing is... Oh, hey. That was garbage. Yeah, those little round ones that sort of, like, if, if you do get a glancing shot at them, they just deflect off. I think that's a new feature. I don't think that was in the original Missile Command. In the original Missile Command, all the missiles just do what you see these normal... I mean, all, all the bombs just sort of did what, you know, you see these normal bombs doing. Um... Oh, no! Ah, crap. Yeah, those little nudgy ones. Ah, crap. They, um, that's a new thing. But, so, that's actually one element of this, you know, remake. Oh, I'm all out. There we go. That's an element of this remake that actually is just as, uh, as elegant as, um, you know, as the original game, where you can just see, like, once you do a glancing blow on one of those circles that's coming down, and you see it nudge to the side, you know what that is. Oh, like, I've got to get direct hits on these things. They're more complex. They're rare, but they're more complex than the, re than the regular bombs. <laughs> awesome, this game says, damn, those projectiles have no chill. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this game is, uh, really, really pushing me. So, okay, so I've got this battery, it's out. What happens if I hit restart now? Oh, look at this. Okay, so I can watch a video, which I assume is an ad, uh, to recharge, or if I hit infinite charge, what does that say? Uh, nothing. Oh, there we go. Oh, Look at that. That is a, um, that's an in-app purchase. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so they're basically uh, adopting a really similar strategy to um, to the coin-op version where you'd have to, like, you know, shove uh, quarters into the slots uh, to keep going. They're, they're being a little bit more forgiving. They're letting me play a certain amount before I run out of batteries. But once I run out of batteries, basically, they're, like, either... You know, watch ads, which gives us a, a tiny incremental amount of money um, in order to keep going, or pay us directly one time. I assume it's a one-time fee to have infinite charge. So basically, I think this game is free, but if you pay for infinite charge, that's at the point where you're actually paying for the game. So that's interesting. Well, um, I'm definitely not going to go through an in-app purchase uh on the stream right now so i think we've we've hit our limit but i, I think that gives you a pretty good sh uh a sense of uh what missile command recharged that's what it's called right missile command recharged is about so uh if you're interested in this i mean definitely just classic old school fun uh it's 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 very much like the uh like the original experience that i had when i was, when I was a kid and so it, it's it's kind of the ideal game for certain scenarios like like there's a lot of different ways that I use mobile games. Uh, there's a lot of just like regular indie games, stuff that I would play on my PC that I'll play on my iPad too because it's more relaxing to play it in bed or play it lying in a hammock uh, than it is to be you know sitting here in my office chair, you know because this is this is where I work. You know psychologically, if I'm gonna be relaxing, I'd much rather be in a hammock than be here. And so th that's one way that I use my iPad, um, and one way that I play mobile games. But the other way is you know I have my phone on me. I've just got a little bit of time to kill, and I want to just play something to fill to fill a few minutes. And you know, a, a very simple game with very short sessions uh, that doesn't really expect you to play it for a long period of time, like Missile Command Recharged, is, is is ideal for that kind of setting. And it's it's kind of fun, like as you know, as a mobile developer, which is what what I used to do uh, like eight years ago. Um, 
you know, you'd think about it, like, like what scenario is the player playing this in? If they're playing it for just a few minutes on the bus, and, and that's what you're sort of optimizing for, then you have to make sure your game has very short load times, uh, that, you know, very, you know, short, um, you know, short sessions, and uh, and you can't bore the player, because if, if you even bore them for five seconds, they'll move on to something else, because their whole purpose is to not be bored for five seconds. Um, so, yeah, so that can, it can be a challenge. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, there we go. So let's uh, let's wrap up this video and do something else. Hmm. We ran out of music. <laughs>